Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Cassandra, and I do a lot of travel videos, mostly to Disney World, but we go to a few other places. So if this is your first time tuning in, please stick around. I hope you like the content. Please subscribe to our channel, and please like the video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the difference between the club level at Disney World and the club level at Universal in Florida. We have been to Disney World club levels quite a few times. We have a lot of videos of that content. So if you're interested, please check out our videos. We've stayed at every club level at Disney World. And a few weeks ago, we tried the first time at a universal club level. We stayed at Lowe's Portofino Bay Hotel and we stayed club level there. And I'm going to go into the differences between what we experienced there versus what we've experienced at Disney World. If you aren't familiar with club level, club level gives you access to a lounge that you can access throughout the day at different serving times where they have food and beverages offered. These, these services are available to you the day of check-in and the day of checkout, as well as every day in between. There are differences in the times you are allowed to access based on where you are going, which I will get into in the video. You also have access to a dedicated lounge concierge staff where they can help you with purchasing tickets or any other needs that you may have on your trip. Disney World has four different services, breakfast, snacks, evening hors d'oeuvres, and dessert offerings. Universal has four servings as well, the same, breakfast, snack time, evening offerings, and dessert. The hours vary a little bit between the two. Disney's hours are a little bit longer with about an hour extra onto each service whereas Universal's hours are more limited. So Disney kind of wins in this one because their hours are just longer, which makes it more convenient to you and for you. Also at Disney World, you are allowed to access the lounge all the way through the dessert offering on your day of checkout. At Universal, your access to the lounge stops at 11 a.m. on your checkout day. So that may not be a big deal for some people and it may be a big deal for others. I have seen people in the lounges eating dinner before they leave to catch an airplane to go home. So it might be beneficial for you. Um, we were able to get a pretty good deal at Lowe's Portofino Bay because they're undergoing a construction and refurbishment. So that room was around $500 a night. The club level rooms at Disney World vary because you have different views. Uh, so you have different categories. The ones at Universal, more are just either club level or not. Disney World, you've got varying club level, water view, resort view, bigger rooms, smaller rooms. But the price for the comparable rooms is definitely less at Universal. I don't know what's going on with Disney, but they have increased their club level room prices dramatically in the past year. They have gone from anywhere, the least expensive could have been around 500 or $550. Now, I can't see, a, the least expensive one I see on their website is usually around $700. That's for the least expensive club level at Disney, which is Coronado Springs. But most of their rooms have increased at least by $200 per night for the club level rooms at Disney World. Um, some of them are even more. The Grand Floridian recently did a refurbishment. It's been six months, maybe close to a year now. And with that refurbishment, their club level prices jumped up dramatically. And a resort view, which is the regular bottom line club level room is about $1,200 a night. And that's for the lowest. Um, it's just, I, I do not think those prices are worth it. I will tell you that right now, $1,200 a night for a resort view club level room at the Grand Floridian is a ripoff. It just is, my opinion. <laughs> um, so price-wise, definitely goes to Universal. I really hope that Disney will decrease their club level prices so we can all enjoy it more. But as of right now, it is really expensive. Another benefit of staying at a club level resort at Universal is you get the Express Pass Unlimited, which lets you skip the line for the rides at the Universal Resorts. This is a huge perk that saves you hundreds of dollars would you purchase it 
separately. So we cannot stress that enough. You do not have to have club level to get this perk. It is a perk of the resort itself. The Lowe's Portofino Bay Hotel offers this as a perk, as well as a few other resorts at Universal. So let's talk about the rooms. I briefly mentioned those. Again, there's different categories at Disney World and there are not different categories at Universal. Within the rooms, you do get two robes at Disney World and at Universal, we received one and you do get slippers at Disney and at Universal, they do not have slippers. While the concierge staff we encountered at Universal were pleasant and polite, the Disney concierge staff are just more engaging, outgoing, friendly, and talkative. Um, they seem to care more, whether that's true or not, you know, I guess that's up to them, but they do seem to care more and they're more engaging. On a second note, somewhat related, the Universal Lounge is much bigger and busier. So they have a lot more people to tend to, a lot more food and beverages to keep replenished. So they may just not have enough time to engage. Where the Disney World Club Lounges are a little more private, not quite as big and not quite as busy. So they just may have more time to engage and interact with the guests. So I'll go through all the offerings at Disney and Universal and the differences and similarities. The breakfast offering was great at Universal and it's great at all the Disney ones as well. There's a lot of options, a lot of food. I will say the quality of food is higher at Disney World. They have um, just a few more elevated options. They have like smoked salmon and capers usually. Um, their danishes are a little better quality. Their beverages are better quality. Um, they have juices and things that are prepackaged as opposed to in a big container. But Universal did have something called spa water in a lot of their services, and they had a green juice. Check out my video, and I, I give you all the details about what was in that juice, but they had that for breakfast, which was interesting and different. For snack time, Universal has a big win here. So Disney World snack offerings in the club lounges is really weak. It's leftover pastries from breakfast, a cookie, some prepackaged chips, pretzels, goldfish, sometimes a trail mix that you can make yourself. Uh, and that's about it. Oh, you also have vegetables a lot of times, like a vegetable and a dip. The snack serving at Universal had Prepackaged chips as well. They had vegetables as well, but they also had ham and cheese or deli meats and bread where you could make your own sandwiches. Uh, that's a big plus. If you're really wanting to actually have a lunch there, you could make yourself a sandwich and have some chips and some vegetables and be full and be fine. So the advantage on snacks goes to universal. The evening hors d'oeuvres uh, at Disney most of the resorts really are hors d'oeuvres, so they're in a tiny little plate, so you kind of have to make multiple trips to actually get full on the food that they serve. Uh, the exception really is the Wilderness Lodge seems to have more hearty, big containers of food that you don't have to go up multiple, multiple times to get. But most of the other resorts do have like a tiny hors d'oeuvre serving. So the food is good. Um, it's just in smaller portions. At Universal, it's almost like a buffet where you have a big, you know, you even have two stations of the same food. Our night there, they had chicken piccata with rice and roasted vegetables. It was very good. I was full, my kids were full, so it was a great service. Sometimes Disney's can be a little, their food offerings can be a little edgy or um, just not your typical. So. Not all kids are gonna like that. They usually always try to have one kid-friendly option, but you know, that could be macaroni and cheese, it could be chicken nuggets. Uh, Universal did have a kid-friendly option as well, which was corn dogs. Depending on your children, they still might not like that either. So I would call this a tie for dinner because although the quality of food is mostly better at Disney, the food at Universal was good too, and there was plenty of it and it's, it was what we needed, you know, to have a nice dinner. The dessert offering definitely goes to Disney. They have at least four to five options and usually an ice cream. 
to choose from as well as cordials. So we haven't talked about alcohol yet, which I will get to next, but they have um, just more variety for dessert time. Universal has two options and a cookie, and that was it. They had evening coffee and two desserts and a cookie. So definitely much better desserts at Disney World. All right, let's talk about the alcohol. So at Universal, you are offered alcoholic beverages only during the evening offering, which is dinner time. Any other time, they do not have it available for you. They offer beer and wine and truly seltzers. The wine was bottom shelf, not a great quality. The beers, there were a couple I didn't recognize, and maybe they were Italian because we were staying at an Italian-themed resort, um, but I did see Michelob Ultra. At Disney World, they have alcohol available all day long per request. Alcohol is out and being served during the evening offering. You have upper shelf wines, really nice tasting wines, champagne, and beer. I know the beer is usually Stella and a few other of the higher quality beers. They also have cordials offered during the dessert service, which is usually like a Grand Marnier, Bailey's, Kahlua, to go to have with your evening desserts. So the alcohol edge is definitely at Disney World. Also, the lounges at Disney World often have an outdoor seating area. It might be small, but they usually have some kind of option, and Universal does not. They don't have an outdoor area to enjoy your food. Also, the parking at Disney World is free. You do not have to pay for self-parking. And at Universal, it was you do have to pay for it. I think it was $25. If I'm wrong, I will make sure to put it right up here. But I feel like it was $25. Also, at Disney World, you receive a welcome letter and a little treat in your room upon arrival. That doesn't happen at Universal. Uh, the treat varies from resort to resort. It's usually themed after their theme at the resort. Like you might get taffy at the boardwalk or they used to do macaroons at the contemporary. They quit doing that. So they give you a piece of artwork instead, which is not as good. I wish they'd go back to the macaroons. And the Wilderness Lodge gave us this huge chocolate totem pole. It was really good, really neat. So they give you a little welcome gift and Universal doesn't. Now, Universal does send you an email before arrival with all the menus for the week. Even though you, no matter how many nights you're staying, they give you the menu for the week so you know what food is going to be offered and what time the servings are, which is nice to have in advance. One other thing that's a little different at Universal is when you enter the lounge, they have a staff member at the entrance checking your name to make sure you're supposed to be in there. So the door is locked and you have to use your room key but for some reason they also have someone stationed there to check your name and make sure I guess you're allowed to be in there so I don't know if they've had problems before or or what the deal is and it wasn't an inconvenience it was just different I don't know that it's better or worse per se but it is something you need to have your name checked when you come in and then if they recognize you the next time they won't check your name obviously but they don't recognize everyone all the time I will also mention that our room at Universal was really dated. It's definitely in need of a refurbishment. There were a lot of just war, it was just worn out. You know, a lot of the paint was chipped, a lot of dings here and there. The bathroom was musty and, and not very nice. So that is one of the differences in the rooms as well between Disney and Universal. Now, I will say we haven't stayed at all the Universal Resorts. Um, we probably will make that one of our things to do, just try out all of them so I can be better informed. All right, so which one do we think is better? Um, it's hard, hard to decide on. But as you can see from what I just said, both of them have some pros and cons. It's kind of hard to weigh. Uh, the price at Disney is really outrageous right now. I'm not going to lie. I I can't believe they're charging so much right now for club level rooms. I was able, we stayed there a few times this summer and I was able to book it with bounce back offers that maybe occurred prior to the price hike. Um, I think I booked those bounce back offers last December. So it has been quite a while since I got locked that rate in. 
but their club level prices are really expensive right now. And I don't know if that's going to change. So even with our annual pass discount, the price is still really high and it's something you have to weigh in. Are you going to consume that many more meals in the lounge and that many more alcoholic beverages to offset the cost increase in the room from a regular room? Now, the regular rooms haven't seemed to as to have increased in price as much as the club level rooms have. So it's not like an even increase in price. So that's concerning as well. A club level room used to be maybe $150 to $200, sometimes only $100 and something dollars more than a regular room at Disney World. And now they're at least $200, maybe $300 more per night for a club level. And that's just hard to offset that cost Are you really going to eat and drink $300 worth of food in one night? Probably not. So it's just something you have to weigh into. And people like us who have gone club level many times before, it's going to be hard to try to break that. But the price is just going to, you know, keep us from staying there as much. It really is. So you really have to look at that. We are excited and are going to try the other club levels at Universal. And I'm gonna book longer trips so we can actually take advantage of the Express Pass, which we were not able to do on this trip we just took. So, you know, that's gonna be something we're gonna look at and hopefully we'll be able to stay over there as well some too. Again, so for the overall experience, I'm gonna give it to Disney. I love their concierge staff. They're always very friendly, very accommodating, and we've always had great experience. However, like I mentioned, I am going to try Universal more, and I'm not going to be able to stay at Disney as much club level because of these huge price increases, unfortunately. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know what your opinions are. If you've seen the price increase, What do you think about it? Have you been to Universal Club level? And do you like that one as well? So let me know what you think in the comments. I thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate your support. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned. We're actually going to be going to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party in a few weeks. And I'll make sure to have videos of that as well as our resort stay while we are there. While we are there, we are staying at the Contemporary Resort club level for two nights, which I was able to book on a bounce back offer. So that's how we were able to pay for that one. Right now, the contemporary is at least $1,000 a night with an AP pass uh, discount. So it's highly unreachable for a lot of people, including myself. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. We've got great ones coming up.